Mabuhai, Kamusika, welcome. How are you? This is Bob from Love Beyond the Sea. Is my Filipina my soulmate? Do I consider her that? Is there even such a thing? Is Isa my soulmate? You hear that a lot in the Philippines, and it's what I want to cover today. Please subscribe to Love Beyond the Sea, where I want to share with you what I'm discovering that helps us have a good marriage because I want to help other men consider finding their soulmate if there is such a thing or wife. Get notifications for upcoming videos by tapping the bell and I would enjoy hearing, hearing your comments about this topic. I am happy that some young men view this channel because they owe it to themselves to do what they can to find a good wife. I'd also like to get to 1,000 subscribers before I end up in a nursing home, so please subscribe. I've been married for over six years to my wife. Marriage, people said, would never work out. Got married way too fast, 54 days, um, so far away, age gap, bringing her to America, can't work, won't work. Well, it has been working, and uh, hopefully people can learn from this channel. Now, I think it is especially important for Filipinas to understand this message about soulmates because I think they are often quick to declare a Westerner their soulmate. I'm going to put forward different ideas about a soulmate, so I hope you'll indulge me on this topic. I'm going to take it very seriously, as I usually do. Perhaps you've never come out and said that you believed in a soulmate, but maybe you are pursuing a mate as if you do. That could be a mistake. I'm going to give you something to think about. You don't hear much about this topic, so that's why I am making this video. Initially, I wasn't expecting this topic to be too difficult to write about, but after doing some research, I became more interested in it, as it seems um, the idea could be more harm than good. It kind of seems harmless at first, I will be expressing my thoughts and quoting from three sources that I am linking in the description box. What do you think about when you hear the word soulmate? Or what do you feel about other people that use that term? Now let's start with from keen.com. By the way, I'm going to do this in two parts so you, know, you don't have to digest it all at once. From Keen.com, there are certain familiar paradigms on the landscape of modern love that can trace their origins back to the earliest days of recorded history. The phenomena of love at first sight and having a soulmate are the stuff of ancient legend, they say. In Greek mythology, each person was purportedly half of one larger being, separated at birth by destiny. Life's quest was to find one's other half and recombine in order to become a whole entity. While the Greeks may have painted a poetic picture of true love, does it really apply to people now? The probability of anyone believing that each of us is literally one half of a single larger human being is slim. However, many of us do like to think we are part of a perfect pair that meshes on every level, spiritual, physical, and emotional. Today, whether or not one believes in the concept of having a soulmate depends on one's definition of the term. So just what is a soulmate? Is it someone to whom you are immediately drawn? Is it someone you feel that you absolutely cannot live without? Or is it someone you can communicate with freely, with whom you feel a deep level of comfort connection and trust and that nearly every moment you spend with this person offers happiness and contentment. From marriage.com over 88% of young adults believe they have a soulmate somewhere waiting for them. This is according to a study by the National Marriage Project at Rutgers University. Probably not going to help my cough any. <clears throat> Clearly, the idea of um, soulmate is a pervasive one. But is it real? Where did the term even come from? Is it dangerous to put so much faith in a notion that is nearly impossible to prove? 
For many, the idea of a soulmate is rooted in fate, God's will, or reincarnation of a former love. Others have no clear understanding of exactly why they would believe in the idea of a soulmate, but still feel strongly that they are destined to be with one specific person in this world. Here's my thoughts. If you are married to a Filipina, a woman from the Philippines like I am, she probably refers to you as her soulmate. Some, a lot of people do that. A common idea of a soulmate is that for every person, there is another person who is a perfect fit. And if you marry anyone other than this soulmate, you will never be happy. And that's where this gets serious. This little statement reveals several dangers. Let's start with this one. Your soulmate, soulmate, is not going to be wonderful all the time. At some point, marriage is going to punch you in the face and you'll realize it isn't going to be one big road trip. We all go into marriage with the best intentions, but most of us realize we will both need to be dealing with our differences, learning to be unselfish and to be forgiving. Situations come up that we didn't expect, and sometimes they are difficult to resolve harmoniously. Your soulmate is going to tax your patience at times and be difficult to live with at times. And if she considers you her soulmate, the same thing can be said. Also consider that this can be used as an excuse for a divorce, this idea of soulmate. Second problem is that when someone experiences unforeseen conflict with their soulmate, they might second guess their decision to marry them and look for greener pastures. I mean, come on. If it isn't going the way we hoped it would, then maybe I married the wrong person, missing my true soulmate. This could result in getting a divorce and another search for Mr. or Mrs. Soulmate. It certainly could result in a lack of effort to work through conflicts together because someone could figure there is no point to that. They just need to find their soulmate. Also, you'll never be happy if you marry someone else. A person could think that. If I don't marry my soulmate, couldn't be happy. Only with my soulmate. I see a couple issues with this one. One is that it could cause someone who is single to become paralyzed in analyzing the possibility someone could or could not be their soulmate. How are they to tell exactly what's the checklist, the criteria? What are the giveaway signs? Can they trust the person they're thinking might be their very soulmate? Another problem with, with this thinking is that if your spouse died, then you are stuck being single without a soulmate for the rest of your life. The same idea if victimized by divorce. Obviously, it is easier to convince yourself after a divorce from your soulmate that they really weren't your soulmate. But when death is involved, the soulmate concept might stymie another attempt at love. And what if, you know, this soulmate um, dies quickly after just a few years? Well, if something should happen to my amazing Isa, I would not be interested in marrying anyone else. I mean, I would want to get married, that's for sure. <coughs> Excuse me, but I, I just couldn't see myself reinvesting myself in someone else. Not because I believe in the exclusivity of a soulmate concept, but because I don't think I could do it. I most certainly hope to never have to find out. When Isa isn't around, I feel differently. A couple of times she had returned to the Philippines for important matters and I was without her for a total of five weeks. I dreaded all the days. I tried to focus on the usual things, you know, but without this woman to be with, without her at my side, it was very uncomfortable for me. As I tell her, together is my favorite place to be. 
But what happens when someone who believes in a soulmate is met with an untimely death? That is enough of a burden to bear, but to weigh it down with the thought that the only person in the entire universe you were meant to marry just died, and you might be still in your 20s or 30s, could be overwhelming. The soulmate concept, I think, limits your capacity to find a spouse. Now, this is again from Keen.com, K-E-E-N. It should be in the description later. There are several inherent dangers in putting too much credence in the soulmate concept because the idea that there is one and only one right person out there for us is fraught with romantic landmines and unrealistic aspirations. Well said. By thinking that there's only one perfect pairing for you, you've already limited yourself from being open to potential partners who might actually make a great love match, if given the opportunity, to grow into a relationship. To dismiss this potential pool of lovers out of hand is to do oneself a great disservice. Those who adhere to a long laundry list of must-haves for a mate are setting themselves up for failure. And in so doing, they are also abdicating responsibility for their inability to find Mr. or Ms. Wright, or Mrs. Wright, or they say Ms. Wright, I don't like to use that term, by refusing to view their own romantic shortcomings through the lens of reality. Continuing with the article, rather than recognizing and owning up to the folly of a set of rigid standards that can never be attained, they simply blame the world for its um, inequities. Their rationalization is, there's no one out there for me. When the reality is that there may be plenty of people out there just not any so-called perfect ones. What such people do not grasp is that perfection is, for the most part, an illusion. Even in the best relationships, there are going to be arguments because there's going to be misunderstandings and the occasional, you know, contention. By being unwilling to accept anything other than an ideal partner, it releases them from the responsibility of finding a partner at all. You see that a lot today. And all they and, and they, they get to play victim. They get to play victim. On the other hand, proactive people who are looking for love understand that flaws and foibles are to be expected. And unless the issues turn out to be major, they don't have to be deal breakers. Well, I will have much more on the concept of a soulmate in the next video right here on Love Beyond the Sea.